Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Megan and you're watching The Crafty Quinn. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some brand new spring 2023 Dollar Tree DIY ideas. And I'm going to show you next what we'll be working with today. So these are some brand new gardening slash spring signs that Dollar Tree has come out with for the season. They have some gnomes as you can see, but they also have these gorgeous like wood cutouts and things like that and, and bird houses and they also have some 3d shapes like bees and ladybugs but they also have these mini flower pots craft shapes they have like little fences and little watering cans and things like that so we're going to be using all of this well most of this in today's video starting with this gorgeous sign right here so this one is called life is beautiful and it is definitely a gorgeous sign but <laughs> I will say the process for this takes a while. I'm not gonna, you know, try to hide the fact that this definitely took me more than an hour to paint the entire thing. So I just wanna be very upfront with you about that. But first we are going to start with some barnwood wax stain that I got from Michaels. I love this gray color and I'm wearing gloves only because I just don't wanna get this all over my fingers because it is a stain. So this is a nifty trick I like to do. I've learned it from many other crafters as everyone else on YouTube seems to like to use this trick as well. But you take a makeup remover wipe and when you are staining something, it just helps better distribute the stain. So it also kind of lightens it as well. As you'll notice, it doesn't come out quite as dark as when I first put it down on the sign. And then to get in between those letters, I just use a smaller brush. So definitely it was, it was tricky to get in between some of them and I had to use an even smaller brush. So this is the typical process that I followed for the rest of the sign. And then we are getting into these parts. <laughs> so this, I decided to make it look like water was coming out of these little holes in the watering can and thought it would be a fun trick to try and do that. So I took a teeny tiny brush <laughs> to paint this butterfly pink. This was another color that I got from Michaels and I don't know the name of this one. Um, they have a million paint. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember this one. But this one, I'm trying to remember this one, but this is a folk art color in their chalk points, in their chalk paint section. So definitely came out a little bit brighter than I was hoping but I'm gonna show you guys how I make it kind of, well, darkened, I guess. So this is what I like to do when a color is not exactly to my liking. I like to distress it a bit, and that is what we're going to do here. So I take a bit of antique Waverly Wax, which is another stain, and I just brush it over with a chippy brush. And I love that it, it kind of adds a little bit of brown to the color, and I don't know, I just, I like the vintage-y look of it. So this, these are some flowers, some burlap flowers that I've had from Hobby Lobby for a while now. They, they always seem to have these, so you should be able to find them in their paper craft section. And that is the brand that they are from. I got a little tired of painting all of the flowers, so I'm like, you know what? Let's just try and cover this up with some burlap flowers and, and see how it turns out. So I'm just taking a shortcut here, <laughs> but I, I actually really ended up liking the final look of this. So before we dive into the next DIY, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you never miss a new upload. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, like, comment if you like what you're seeing, and let's head on to the next craft. This one is so fun, you guys. It is gorgeous. You're not gonna wanna miss this, so make sure to stick around. So we are taking this wood crate from Dollar Tree, and this burlap piece is a burlap table runner that I got from Hobby Lobby a while ago, and I've just been using little pieces of it here and there whenever I need them for projects. So I just kind of did a quick trace and cut. <laughs> and ladybugs, I use a lot of ladybugs in today's project, so I have to use my ladybug vacuum, of course, which I have linked in my bio if you're looking for a vacuum for all of your crafting debris. <laughs> so I'm going to paint this wood crate first with some white chalk paint. I use Waverly and that is just my go-to color. And we're gonna paint a smaller piece as well. This, you know, you can make this whatever size you like, but we are making a fresh flowers stand. 
and that's why I'm using these pieces and so we're kind of slowly assembling this fresh flower stand piece by piece. So these mini flower pots that I showed you at the beginning of this video, these really come in handy. And these, I'm not even going to paint them or stain them or anything because they are just so cute as they are. So they, they have like kind of two shapes, two and a half shapes there, and we are going to fill them with flowers for our flower stand. First, I, I thought, let's go with some lavender, and then I just used some other ones from other Dollar Tree floral picks. So I did about maybe like three of these per pot, but I could fit a lot in the large one. And then I simply just put hot glue in the very bottom of each little pot. And then I just kind of grabbed the bouquet and just kind of like just shoved it in there and just kind of held it in place until I made sure that it was definitely, the glue was definitely dry. I thought about maybe putting moss in these two in these little flower pots too, but they are so little, I didn't even feel like I needed to put moss or Spanish moss in there at all. So Fresh Flowers Rub-On Transfer is perfect for this. This is from Dollar Tree. I've had this for a while now and I've been trying to figure out what to do with it and making a fresh flower stand kind of seemed perfect for this. And I had this in mind, of course, when I thought of this craft. So I cut down a little wood piece to size. You saw me paint it. And now I'm just laying down the rub-on transfer. So I will say this one was a little bit more difficult to work with than I thought it would be. Some, a little bit of each letter kind of came off with it. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I've just had this transfer for such a long time that maybe it was sticking more to the plastic than, I don't know, than it should have, but yeah. So it worked and everything, but you know, it kind of came out a little bit, like some pieces of it were missing, but I will say it kind of gave it a more vintage look, so that's fine. <laughs> it still came out cute. Everything is still mostly intact. Next, I took some floral foam and I pushed this down into the wood crate. It was not a perfect fit, but I didn't feel like cutting it, so I just pushed it down. It's so easy to, to kind of just, you know, do that and, and it just, the foam just kind of works around it. So I definitely had some, some excess there, as you can see, but I just kind of wiped that off and we were good to go. But it was a little bit higher on the top, so I ended up kind of shaving a, a bit of it off with a finger sander. Next, that burlap that you saw me cut at the beginning is going to be our tabletop. So I'm, two, I'm using this, this wooden dowel and you're gonna need two of those for this to hold up your sign. So I tried to kind of shove this, you, you know, in the burlap and the floral foam, but it did not go through it. Like it's not sharp, obviously. So I realized, you know what, I'm just gonna kind of poke this and then create a, a little tiny hole with my scissors just so I can push this through and it will hold. So I did not need to glue this or anything. It, it held up really well in just the floral foam. And then I did the same for the other side. And once they were in there, next it's time to hot glue our billboard, not billboard, but sign. <laughs> and I did actually glue down the burlap to the wooden crate just to make sure that our tablecloth would stay on our tabletop. And that's where these pots come in handy. They are the finishing touch, well, one of the fin finishing touches of our Fresh Flowers Market Stand. This is probably one of my favorite crafts of all time, you guys. I am in love with this and a bit obsessed. <laughs> so just gonna glue down the other two, just like I did with the lavender. And to make them like me, to make sure that they would definitely stand up, I did glue them to one another as well as gluing them to the sign as well. And then I thought, let's make this really farmhouse looking and let's distress this fresh flower stand with some antique wax and a jibby brush, of course. Here is the final result. I love this. Oh my gosh. I wish there was like something like this in life-size form. <laughs> so anyway, moving on to our third craft here. This is a farmhouse sign, one of their newer ones from Dollar Tree. 
and these floral picks or whatever you want to call them greenery i think i got these from walmart in their like 97 cents floral section <laughs> whenever they they are running those promotions they kind of change out the the flowers in each one of those like 97 cent sections so I can never seem to find the same ones twice because they always seem to change. But I'm just cutting out some leaves and just the top of these, these greenery picks here. And we are going to make, basically, we're gonna make an outdoor kind of like backyard scenery with all of these cute little new garden wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. So we have these two long pieces in the corner here. We have this smaller one and we're just taking some hot glue and we're just laying everything down and this grass is going to go around the entire bottom of this sign. Next, I decided to, instead of painting each flower individually, I mean, I had done so much painting tonight that I did not want to. <laughs> I did not want to do more painting, you guys. This was me just being lazy. I took some antique wax and I stained it and I just stained the whole thing for each piece. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I did kind of go back and lighten them some more. So here are the additional shapes. I'm going to pull them all out so you can see what is in here. There are four different shapes in this 24 piece bag. You have a watering can, a wheelbarrow, you have a flower in a flower pot, and then you have just the flower pot. <laughs> so four different shapes. 24 pieces in the pack. And these are over in Dollar Tree's spring section, in their gardening section. This is where I found all of this. So over near like their flower pots and all that stuff, that's where you can find this stuff. And they are not right now in every Dollar Tree because some of the Dollar Trees, ha basically about half the Dollar Trees that I've gone to, these have not been there, but the other half had them. So I don't know how they're choosing what stores get these wood cutouts, but it, it was bizarre. I was expecting to see them in every Dollar Tree. So I decided to paint obviously the, the wheelbarrow and the watering can, but now I am making just a scene with some clouds because there was a little chip in this sign and I was trying to cover that up. <laughs> so I was like, let's draw clouds at the top here. <laughs> Next, we are gonna use these ladybugs. Oh my gosh, they are so cute. We're gonna put this on that leaf and make it look like it's kind of like in a, I don't know, in a field on the leaf or something. <laughs> so these ladybugs and these bees, these they're called the craft wood 3D pieces. Well, they are actually stickers and I didn't know that until after I had glued one down. So <laughs> basically I, I had to peel off the backing for the rest of them. So you can stick them or you can hot glue them down. I don't like to rely on just the sticker part, so I, I just hot glue each one down just to make sure they definitely will stay. But just a heads up to remove the sticker backing off of each of these 3D pieces before you glue them down. So then we are laying down our fence. I just laid down each fence piece next to each other and I just hot glued down everything on top. So I really kind of hot glued it more to the branches. And now we're gonna hot glue down our wheelbarrow and our watering can. And I use that to actually cover up where the fences break. <laughs> so here is our spring garden scene. And here's one idea you can use with these Dollar Tree new wood gardening shapes. Here is another new gardening, I guess, craft supply tool, whatever you want to call this. This is a galvanized metal watering can sign. It does have a couple holes in the top, so it is a sign, but we are going to put this on a larger sign. And this is going to be the centerpiece of this kind of faux wood piece here. So I, I, Th first thought I was going to dry brush this and that's why I was doing that in the beginning but I realized it was not nearly enough paint and I needed more so I painted the whole thing but now we are distressing this and just kind of having the chippy brush go along the edges of each edge of the sign that sticks out 
So I like that it kind of looks dirty, like muddy, because, you know, it's supposed to look like, you know, from your garden and things like that. And that's the whole theme of these new craft supplies. So why not make it look like it's actually been outside? <laughs> So once everything is distressed to my liking, I then take this Dollar Tree ribbon, I cinch the middle of it using some jute twine, and I made kind of a teeny tiny bow. <laughs> Normally I like to make layered bows, but I just thought this polka dot bow was cute on its own. And then I took more of those paper crafts flowers from Hobby Lobby and placed them on top of the metal flowers. That was kind of definitely a last minute change because you know I went through the trouble of distressing all of that and then I ended up covering them up. But you know, your mind can change as you go along. And then I took some really, really strong hot glue. I used Gorilla Glue on this and so far Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks have been amazing and they seem to work to hold down even the toughest projects. Here's the end result, you guys, and this is our last DIY of today. So I hope you guys have a, a great rest of your weekend and a great start to your week. If you want to watch more videos, check them out here on the left. Let's keep in touch on Instagram and on my website, thecraftyquin.com. Take care, you guys. Bye.